members, including us, being the wedding party. We had a phenomenal time and it's an honor to be part of the wedding party. So give you guys a hand. And also, I'd like to thank Doug, Pat, Dennis, Diane, uh, parents of the bride and groom. They did so much work today, and it really shows. Like, this is a really excellent venue, and everything today is going so smoothly. I know it. That's a lot to do with you guys. So. <laughs> okay. Well, this is my first time giving a best man speech. First time being a best man. So, I kind of have to look for a little bit of advice to make my speech. So the first set of advice I was given is a very clear set of instructions. Stand up, speak up, and very quickly shut up. <laughs> Which is definitely contrary to Ryan's request. So, but upon further research, not everything seems so simple. There is no doubt that Doug and Pat would love nothing less than their best man possible for their daughter. Well, that raises the title, qu question of the title best man. What is the best man for them? If I'm the best man, then why is Ryan marry Ben? <laughs> Today, however, Ivan's the best man, and I am just Ivan's best man. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, I first met Ivan at the Taxi Saint Jean, where we both decided to play for the local traumatic hockey team. All I kept hearing about is this exchange student from Russia called Ivan. <laughs> His dark features and real soft play seems to confirm our suspicion. <laughs> He didn't really drink like a Russian, but the rest seemed right. <laughs> we soon found out it was Ivan Machin, the Francophone, and not Ivan the Terrible from Russia. <laughs> Needless to say, we spent a lot of good university, university days together, uh, playing tons of hockey, tournaments, practices, whatever. And of course, after every game or practice, we would have to shout together. <laughs> Which is pretty commonplace among hockey players, you know. You end up in the showers. And uh, what is really different about this, and I, I find this real strange, is that Ivan describes this, and I quote, his favorite part of playing hockey is his shower room. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't want to tell you about this, but this is weird. But unquestionably, I've showered with Ivan more often than you have. <laughs> I can no longer shower with Ivan. <laughs> it, it really freaks your life. Like when I was when Ivan or when was walking up the aisle and you know I had a tear. It wasn't because I was happy for them. I was sad because we couldn't shower together. <laughs> but I must hand off the torch here. So Ryan, I'm gonna pass you off something here. <laughs> Ivan and I didn't just shower together. We use a glove. <laughs> we use a loofah. <laughs> Normally it's a little, little bit more pink, but this will do. This one's not used around, it's clean, good to go. And lotion, or clarifying shampoo. This is the one we, this is the new type we're experimenting with. It lathers very well. So we're going to have to present to you the golden or the pink loofah glove and exfoliating, lathering, you know, that kind of stuff. Only <laughs> <laughs> after you feel very gently. Fine. <laughs> I guess that's just become more liberal. I don't know. Okay, now Ryan, I have to tell the story of how I became to know you and how I knew you the one for Ivan. I didn't meet you yet, but there was one day when Ivan went for drinks at lunch, going fully well to dinner plans with you. And th this was pretty funny. I had a good laugh over this. But well, <laughs> Ivan went with a friend to the overtime bar on the south side, which is a long ways away from Ryan's condo downtown, and they had made plans for dinner. So as you can imagine, you know, Ivan had a couple drinks, and he's not the type of stop. You'll see that tonight. And, uh, so, 
he had a couple drinks and you know they'd come a couple more and then do you imagine it never was gonna work for Ann, right? Like he man is out of control. <laughs> and the drinks kept pouring. He kept pushing dinner plans. I think he was supposed to go to his uh, mom and dad's house that night. I can't remember the exact details. Didn't really matter because the man wasn't making it. And uh, no such luck. A couple of drinks again, more alcohol kept winning again. So Ivan kept trying to push the plans. For some reason he thought this would still work. You know, I'm going to see Ryan after. And no. He called her about three, four times trying to push the plans. And finally he's like, hey, I'll be home before uh, bed. Well, he didn't make it. He passed out on some couch and fell outside at a friend's house. And uh, yeah, I guess that was didn't really look too good. It was pretty early on in the relationship. And um, Ivan was in definitely no shape to go home. So maybe it was a good choice. And, you know, smells and whatever else. And, uh, so the next morning, he has the audacity to call Rihanna and ask her to ride home. <laughs> Unbelievable. And uh, I don't know exactly what went on in the conversation. Like, I would have loved to have heard it. But I knew that he was getting his ride. And he was walking home. So, this is, this is good. But uh, this wasn't an August day like today. You know, this was a nice warm morning, whatever. This was a cold November morning. This was windy, howling. He had to cross the high-level bridge, and he was in that bump. It, it's pretty tight. That high-level bridge walk, that could have been too good. <laughs> so I knew that day that Ivan had met his match, and that Rihanna and Ivan were going to be just fine. <laughs> so I definitely know that you two and Lola will be very happy together. <laughs> Lola is a little dog for me, right? Um, first off. Well, Ivan, the story, as I said, Definitely do not tell the first that you are. You've always been loyal, dependable, someone I can always talk to. And you know, you've been a great teammate, better friend. So everybody, if you could raise your glass to you back. Like take a toast, be back. Salute.